it's Michael Melfi. I'm a partner at Taylor English. And today I'm enthusiastic to have Amanda Highland joining us. Amanda, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. Awesome. And I'm looking forward to talking about something that actually is near and dear to me is NFTs and cryptocurrency and that whole world and really how trademarks and IP evolve around that and some of the issues that are around that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to diving in here just a second to talk more. At least we'll start with is NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and really talking about what is happening in that world. They seem to have just exploded overnight and just by their given nature, they're prone to have some IP issues. And so looking forward to talking a little about that and the trademarks that, that uh, arise around that. So with that, Amanda, do you mind just really quick, give a little bit of introduction about yourself, a little bit about your background and how you kind of got more into the IP and the cryptocurrency NFT space. Awesome, Michael, thank you. Yes, so I am also a partner at Taylor English. Um, I practice in our intellectual property group and I focus largely on trademark and copyright issues in every industry under the sun. And lately, no matter what the industry is, it has been touching on NFTs and cryptocurrency. I think I've had at least one new issue a week pop up over the last few months where a client has a NFT related IP problem. And happy to talk today about what I've learned and some strategies so folks can stay out of trouble and protect their trademarks in this space. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Well, with that, I, I think let's just dive right in. I mean, almost as quickly as NFTs have popped up, all, also have the trademark issues. And so what are some of the main issues that you see arising in this space? Yeah, so, so it's a little bit of the Wild West right now. And what yeah. I'm seeing is that it is so incredibly easy to mint an NFT, meaning to create it. And there's really no barrier to entry to do that. Yep. So we now have so many entities and people flooding NFT marketplaces with these tokens. And along with that, I think a lot of these folks really haven't given any thought into whether the token that they are issuing infringes on copyright or trademark owned by others. And in fact, I have seen a lot of these NFTs that are flagrantly infringing on often very famous trademarks. And I don't think a lot of this is with ill will. I just think we're seeing a lot of folks that really don't understand IP rights thinking, oh, I've got this great idea and they just go full speed ahead and then boom, we've got a problem. We're still new to this. Is there litigation yet? Or I mean, people still just figuring out or have you seen any action kind of happening in the courts over this yet? Yeah, there, there are a couple of cases, um, both in the very early stages. So we do not have any big court opinions that have really addressed trademarks and NFTs and, and you know, given us a precedent to go by. But we do have a couple of interesting cases. One of them involves NFTs issued that look like little Birkin bags. And uh, Birkin bags are these very exclusive, very expensive handbags manufactured by Hermes. And so this is a, a very high-end luxury item. And the maker of these NFTs was taking this very iconic style of purses and making clearly bags that replicate that style, but adding his own designs and finishes to it so that they were in, in some ways creative. And um, we now have a trademark infringement lawsuit filed by Hermes um, and the NFT mentor, the defendant in this case has been very public about the first amendment rights that he believes he has to create art um, and put them on NFTs. And he has compared himself to Andy Warhol. Um, and <laughs> if, if we all remember Andy Warhol did a lot of sort of pop culture art, including I think maybe most famously the Campbell soup cans, you know, and so, I mean, the, the defendant does raise an interesting point about, you know, sort of where is the line on the NFT between something that he is selling or even potentially counterfeiting versus art. Um, so that's a really interesting case that we're all going to be keeping it a is. close eye on. <laughs> we're in this space, this Web 3.0, there's cryptocurrency, there's NFTs, blockchain. We, we hear all the buzzwords, right? And there's starting to be some trademark issues and IP litigation is starting to arise. What's going to happen next? I mean, there's an assumption companies are going to adopt this Web 3.0. So let's make that assumption. So now it happens. What's going to happen next as more companies enter this NFT space? 
Well, for better or worse, we're going to have more disputes and eventually these disputes are going to lead to more case law and then we will have more direction. And it will be easier to do my job, which is to tell clients how to stay out of trouble and how to protect sure. themselves. Um, so the challenge right now is that it is all so new. We're not quite there yet. Um, you know, one of the things right now that we're all looking at are trademark applications, for example. It's still really not clear exactly what types of classes or what types sure. of services um, an NFT owner is eligible to register a trademark in. And that matters. It matters a lot. Um, and and I'll, I'll go back to this Hermes example for a minute. So counterfeiting provides a completely different set of damages than vanilla trademark infringement would. Sure. So if you're a plaintiff and you could bring a counterfeiting claim, that's the claim you want to bring. But typically counterfeiting means apples to apples, right? So it means mm -hmm. I have a trademark registration for handbags and you're selling handbags. Right. Well, what happens when we get into the metaverse or we get into NFTs and I have a registration for physical handbags and you're selling NFTs of handbags, is this still apples and apples or is it now apples and oranges? Mm -hmm. So one of the big strategies right now is you're seeing every type of company, whether it's restaurants, whether it's consumer goods, even the banks, mm -hmm. JP Morgan just did this, um, they're all filing in these, you know, class nine or class 42, getting into the tokens themselves, the virtual goods, the virtual mm -hmm. services that, that are parallel to typically what they offer in the brick and mortar world. So everybody right now is trying to navigate what they should do at the trademark office, what they should do with their marketing plans, what sure. kind of vendors they should be hiring to help them figure out what kind of NFT plan they want to have. So um, right now with my clients, what I've seen is that we're taking sort of a kitchen sink approach um, where we would be trying to, to file um, in a couple different classes and go kind of broad and then look to the trademark office eventually for guidance um, on, on how, how we get in the exact right lane for what ultimately will be an NFT. Got it. So if, if there's someone out there listening right now that owns a new company, an early stage company, maybe has an existing brand or is, is, is part of a, a, a global brand, what would be your advice as far as how can they protect themselves uh, moving forward as this, this new world kind of unfolds? There's a couple of things that I think are important. Number one, we already talked about, and that is get a trademark registration strategy in place. And that means having a plan on how you're gonna get into the NFT space. Right. You're not gonna get into the NFT trademark registration space without actually offering NFTs. So be thinking creatively about how you can take NFTs and merge them with your current business plans. And I've seen companies do some phenomenal things in this space, especially when they take the NFTs and combine it with their favorite charities or their foundation. Um, a lot of times there's ways to have a lot of really good publicity and fundraising for good causes around this. So I think all of that is a really good idea. Second of all, you need to be monitoring the the platforms where NFTs are traded okay. to make sure that your trademark is not being infringed without your knowledge. Um, so this means being aware of what these platforms are and occasionally popping on there, taking a look, search for your own brands and make mm -hmm. sure that they're not popping up. And then if they are, the good news is most of these platforms have forms where you can report infringements and they will pull these NFTs at your request if you have a, a trademark. So um, yeah, it requires a little bit of due diligence. You know, the, these platforms like OpenSea is a good example of one sure. where NFTs are traded. Um, they're not on there making sure your brand isn't being infringed. You have to do that. Sure. And, and if that were to happen, just like other social media platforms or anything, is there somewhere I can go and raise my hand and say, hey, I'm being infringed? Yeah, I mean, they do. They have reporting features built okay. into the site. So you can go on, fill out the form, upload a copy of your trademark registration. And from what I have seen, they are responsive and they are pulling these listings. So great. there's hope there. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Cryptocurrency, all right, it's mm -hmm. out there. I'm gonna switch gears, pivot a little bit here. Are you noticing trademark IP type issues arising in that space? And so what does that look like? 
Yeah, I mean, cryptocurrency is a little bit different from NFTs because there is more of that barrier to entry. It's, it's a lot easier to just mint an NFT than it is to say, oh, I'm coming out with my own cryptocurrency and I'm going to do it in the next two days, right? Sure. So, so um, I don't think we see quite the degree of you know flagrant trademark infringement in sure. the cryptocurrency space as we do with the NFTs. But there are some similar challenges on the brand management and protection side. So, you know, if you are the cryptocurrency owner and you want to protect your trademark, it is a little bit of the Wild West on that right now. That's super helpful. I mean, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate you taking time. I know you're busy and hopping on. This was great. And I think the audience is really going to enjoy this. I think it's some good insight in a relatively new space, the, the Wild Wild West, so to say. And for our next episode, we will be having Mitzi Hill on. We're going to be talking a little bit about cybersecurity and some of the threats that are going on around the United States right now. And we'll be having Mitzi on to talk a little bit about that. So until then, my name is Michael Melfi. I'm a partner at Taylor English, and we'll talk to you soon.